Dawid Does Tech Stuff recently made a video testing cloud gaming platforms. We had to check it out and made our own reactions ourselves. Is he correct? I got the cloud gaming battle crew here and let's go through this video. When I decided to make this video, I didn't realize the sheer amount of cloud gaming services that exist at the moment. I thought there was just going to be like a couple survivors left fighting over scraps in a Denny's parking lot. But no, there's a medium sized swarm of them, all with their own niches, game libraries and pricing. Pricing is something I really want to talk about because- Okay, hold up, hold up. So. He thinks that when Stadia died, cloud gaming died, not that Stadia quit because they weren't winning. Yes. Most, uh, there's a lot of people like this. Okay. There's, a, there's a lot of people who think because Stadia died, cloud gaming is basically dead. Told you. Yeah, that's... A lot of people no. down on that hill for Stadia. Yes. Because Google yeah. died... Well, I know Stadia had some super fans, but yeah. again, Google didn't shut down Stadia because it wouldn't work. Well... That, that's not the problem, it wasn't going to work the way they were doing it correct they wanted to they wanted to have most of the market yes yeah they wanted to be in the apple iphone position they yep. didn't want to be in the so runner-up position yeah they didn't yeah. want to go the geforce now route First, I'm going to look at GeForce Now's pricing, a service I've looked at on the channel before, and it's pretty cool that it comes with a free tier, but that is limited to one hour session lengths and ads. But you know what they say, nothing makes gaming better than some ads. I am with him on that though. Whenever I see ads, I'm just like, ugh. I know. Get that out of my face. Well, I mean, that's the one with the free tier. Yeah, that's the incentive yep. to get the priority now. That's of like, course, you know. No, you don't want ads. That's, you hey, and it's a good incentive. It is a yeah. good incentive. I mean, if, no, uh, nobody if likes anybody in the free up tier. on the paid tiers, that's when I'm upset. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, who, want, who, who even wants to wait on a paid tier? <laughs> mm -hmm. However, you can go all the way up to the ultimate tier for those people that have a 4K high refresh rate monitor but not a system to drive it for some reason. Uh, so this rig for about 26 Canadian dollars a month comes with a 4080 and no ads. Mm. It then took me ages to figure out how much money you have to give Microsoft for them to let you do some cloud gaming. But after digging through an absurd amount of sub menus, I got to this. Now after ages of searching, from what I can tell, this $19 a month tier gets you cloud gaming along with all of the other Xbox Game Pass features. Uh, but this is still in beta, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to try this today. Sony, not to be outdone, has- Is that that hard to find? Ages of searching? Uh, nope, um, it's the only tier that supports cloud gaming, and if you see the actual tiers, it it's right there. So I'm going to Google Xbox Cloud Gaming Service and see if it's difficult to find. Ages. Xbox Cloud Gaming Beta. Yep, you just click that, click Xbox Game Pass, Ultimate has cloud yep right that's that's it that's it wow took me ages man us oh, premium yeah. ultra premium plus ultimate or whatever they call it which i kind of like the idea of because it's a way for you to get access to exclusive playstation games without buying a playstation but to get access to a ps5 on the cloud costs 22 dollars a month that's 22 dollars a month uh that's not necessarily uh, right i mean you could you can play, you play certain games game. through mm -hmm. PS Plus uh, yeah. uh, Ultimate only if you have a PS5, though. Mm -hmm. You don't actually get access to a PS5 on the cloud. You get mm -hmm. to stream games through your PS5 if you have if you bought that game on the cloud. Which is yeah. a lot. But I think for that price, you get games included, which a lot of the others don't. Maybe. I think it does. This stuff is quite convoluted. And I think it's convoluted for a reason so that you end up spending more than you need to. He's not wrong. Like, Microsoft yeah, and yes, Sony yeah. does this on purpose. So yeah. you have to get the highest tier to get whatever you're, you're looking for. They do I mean, this on purpose. The, uh, the review for PS Plus. That was, maybe we had a confusion with that. It was like... What was what level could you actually do cloud streaming on? Yeah, because from we thought because we didn't realize because we already had ultimate that we could play, and then it was like, wait a minute, you have to have ultimate the yeah. ultimate here to do the cloud stream. Yep, it's the it's the you have to have the highest one to do cloud. Yeah. 
no matter what. Otherwise, otherwise, it's kind of like, what's the point? Yeah. That's what he was showing. He was just showing yeah. the ultimate. Tier. Yes, he was showing ultimate. Yeah. So you have to okay. get it. Plus, you get every single game within the package of all tiers. So you and have to get everything. Thing, it's like, it's, it's kind of the checks and balances of it. Because it's not that, you know, you get it and it's like only five games. There's a lot of stuff on there. There's a it's lot like, of stuff. I mean, so if you, yeah, if you only want the cloud, then you're kind of screwed, yeah. though. Well, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, it's like, it, again, it's, it's like you're not just, you're not getting gypped. There's a lot of stuff on there for you to do. Yeah. But you have to get the highest tier to get all that. So there's, yeah. if, if you only want like a, an a la carte thing from that, you can't. No. Right. Well, it's, no. All in, it's all in or not. It makes me wonder how successful it was when they were doing it separate because it used to be separate, but. That's true. Yeah. Clearly it wasn't working out. Well, that's because it sucked. <laughs> <clears throat> Come on, man. I was drinking my Tahitia treat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, no, yeah. Pl- yeah. The old version was bad. It was pretty bad. I mean, uh, you know, PlayStation was using Microsoft's server blades, so they're basically, they were basically the same service, and both of them sucked at the time. Yeah. But it's difficult to know what you're getting for your money with a lot of this stuff. Now, if you want to spend way more money, there is Shadow. Now, in all fairness to Shadow, it is way way more more flexible than something like GeForce. Now, Mm -hmm. it's not just a game instance running in an app. You get a full virtual desktop. As far as I can tell, they're like an enterprise cloud computing service that now also offers gaming PCs. But anyway, their, their pricing is quite misleading as well. Here, it may seem like it's on sale from $40 and costs $10 a month now. But no, that's just the first month that costs $10. It actually costs $40 a month for a system with a 1080 in it. But that isn't the full price either. If you click order, you'll see that for your 40 Canadian dollars a month, that doesn't include any storage. So you need to add a minimum of 256 gigs, which is an- I love how it says extra storage as he's pointing this out. You start with 256 and if you want more, you can add more. So yes, you Mm -hmm. you get 256 first. And then if you yeah. want more, you can add more monthly. Mm-hmm. I, I, he to be fair, did, did not read for this. gaming, 256 is not a lot. Not these days know. anymore. Nope. Not these days. Especially but, games like Call of Duty and stuff like that. They're just too big. Yeah. But new customers for Shadow actually start with 512. So. Mm. Good another four dollars a month and if you want something more powerful it's more than sixty dollars the maximum they setting show is another similar it's more it than just, 60 it kills yeah. me it shows it oh, right yeah. here 512 ssd 512 five, 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 ssd is fine <laughs> i don't yeah. know how he missed that he just completely missed that look at the d drive too maximum yeah. up to five is terabyte is that the extra storage you buy cheap. that's the extra storage mm. okay so you start with 512 ssd and you get up to up to okay. five mm-hmm which is a lot. Which is a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Per options. You know, there is a $10 a month one, uh, but that's got an RX 580 in it and an AMD 1400. But it has limited hours. Depending on when you're playing, you can just get two hours a day to play. And playing any more than that costs you an extra 35 cents per hour. And it's 35 cents per hour for the cheapest package. That price scales up with the higher end packages. So if you go up to the big boy system with the 7900 XTX in it for $30 a month, it costs you an extra $1.25 an hour outside of what you've been allocated. Amazon Luna still exists. Yeah, well, maximum settings is on the docket for this summer. We gotta hit that again. Yes, and um, what he doesn't mention is that you know maximum settings is Linux only. Yeah, well... Again, I haven't I haven't reviewed it in a while, so I'll have to see what they can do. Yep. So that's yeah. That's it was last I checked, but it's been a few months since I looked at everything. But up upgrading um, has been pretty good for them since we've covered them. So uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, this this summer been should be pretty up. good. They've been keeping yeah, maximum up, yeah. settings ha- keeps up. I can't, I can't say the same about Shadow, but maximum settings definitely been keeping up. definitely. Those forgot to turn the service off. Uh, I think it's included with Prime, but you have to pay for all the games in it, which I don't think carries over to like Steam or anything. So, uh, that's kind of misleading. Sure, it's free with Prime, and you o- but you only get like a like five or six games with Prime. If you buy the subscription of Luna, 
you get all the games for free. It's not like you're buying the games. It's part of the subscription, as we call mm-hmm. it, a, an exclusive package deal. Kind of like um, what you would get with Stadia if you bought the Stadia Pro. You got a, a, a bunch of Was he aware games. that you can subscribe to Luna without subscribing to Prime? It looks like he's just looking at the Prime package. That's what... That's probably exactly what he did. He saw that it was part of Prime, and if 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 he is part of Prime, he only got this uh, handful of games, and he thought he probably thought that he um uh you needed to buy all the other games. Yeah. Look, it says uh-huh. my stuff at the top, so that's ex- that's probably exactly what happened. I was like, he didn't even, he didn't even go through Luna at all. Then he just saw, hey, I'm Prime. Uh, I have Ooh, access yeah. to Luna and this handful of games, and that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least that supports his point that it's very complicated and hard to judge what you get. But you could just Google the service and look at the plans. Yep. So that's fun. And you can tell they're in bed with good publishers when the main publisher they advertise is Ubisoft. Ugh. <laughs> the main, <laughs> the main publisher. It's like the only publisher. <laughs> well, I ha- I can't say that now because um. Uh, they just made a deal with the GOG, GOG Games. So I don't know how many games are coming. They said, you know, thousands of games, but I mean, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll yeah. see. Boosteroid is another option which seems to be geared towards the EU market. You can get it in the US, but even the pricing is in Euro. But this 750 euro a month is the only pricing I can find. So that could just be powered by a couple of hamsters in a running wheel. And then the final one, pricing wise, I'm gonna look at is this Ant stream, which is like a retro game streaming one, which makes the least sense of all of these to me because you can play retro games on a thermostat. Surely the point of cloud. Yeah, he's not wrong. I, I don't he's know why right. anyone would go cloud for to do um, retro games. Because they don't want to go through the trouble of the legal aspects, the setting up the emulators, and they want the GeForce Now version of it's just right in front of me when I click the button. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. That's, the only, it's, it, that's it. That's the only thing I can think of. That's He's the only thing I can right. think of, too. But I mean, I no to, reason to do it. Who would pay for that, though? I mean, how many, how many people are actually paying for that? If you think about it, though, it's like if you have, like, for libraries that get discontinued, like they're talking about the Xbox One, they're getting rid of that. That would be a reason to have something like that because oh. they can get those games on there. Because that was uh, not too long ago. There was a lot of people talking about that, like how because they're removing those games off the store and there's not they're not backlogging them, all those games are going to be lost. I so if you, can get, yeah, if you can get a, 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 a platform that's putting all those back on there and you want to play all these old games on the cloud, you know, that makes sense. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. The point is, there are a lot of services, all of which have different game libraries. So if you really heavily invest in game streaming, you could end up in the same situation that anybody that watches TV now is in, where you have to rent several of these services a month just to get to play all the games you want to play. And I would rather eat my own eyelids than have another bunch of companies try and bleed me dry every month like I'm the world's most succulent leech host. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that is super fun. So with that, let's try out some of these services. I even bought a dedicated (laughs) bit of game streaming hardware, which seems... I made a video on these subscriptions are getting crazy, so... Yeah, no, and that's what's happening to, to video streaming. It, it could happen here if we're not careful. Yep. And he's it's right. Very, it's very true. Seems like a really stupid idea, but let's check it out. The hardware in question is this Logitech Cloud, which may look like a Steam Deck competitor, but it's more a six-year-old mid-range tablet with some Joy-Cons spliced to it. Which I guess would be fine if it didn't have the same MSRP as an OLED Nintendo Switch. You know, a real console. It even costs more than an Xbox Series S. That's a brave amount for a device that's performance is directly dependent on how close you live to Jensen's house. Yeah, I mean, um, Nat's doing his review on it right now. Mm-hmm. So um, that video is coming out pretty soon. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, probably this month. Mm-hmm. So uh, once we're done with our review, we'll we'll give our... Uh, yeah, let me know how it works. Yeah, we'll see how it works. So Now, I wanted to start off with GeForce Now because I already had an account. But getting it set up on this device was hugely frustrating. It kept hanging on pages and crashing several times. Which yeah. mixed with the weird keyboard ergonomics made for a frustrating start. Okay. So- yeah, I guess that's one of the, the big things about GeForce Now's app. 
is that it's tailored to PC. Like yes, man. Okay. Uh, and, and even, even even like uh, mobily, like on the phone, like I've done yes. before, and like even on a tablet, it's it's choosing in between like a, a mouse cursor and actually use like the yes. buttons to get back in game and try to get the almost like getting the controls to repair with your with the game that you're in can be frustrating. You kind of gotta like. It's like trial and error sometimes just to get it back on. Mm -hmm. I think it's the worst on TV because the Samsung Gaming Hub. It's uh, like, you know, it's like you'd rather just, instead of using uh, your controller, like all the other mm -hmm. apps mm -hmm. for the Gaming Hub, uh, mm -hmm. you want to plug in a mouse and keyboard to work that app on, on the TV. It's just, just to get it, yeah, just to get it just going. Yeah. So we, we've finally gotten it working. Oh no, I can't really see where I'm driving. It's okay. There There is a bit of a delay between like mm -hmm. inputs it's and definitely a delay on his screen. But for yeah. a game like this, it just makes the car feel heavier. But because of the size of the display, unless you really get your face in there, you don't really notice that low YouTube video bitrate vibe to the image too much. Moving over to Cyberpunk, again, the input lag is kind of noticeable. There is that heaviness to the inputs, which makes it feel a bit like you're swimming in ketchup. But I don't think Cyberpunk makes sense for this form factor, because the environments are quite busy and you have to see enemies at like a distance and stuff. I don't know if I'd play Cyberpunk like this. Fortnite has this weird way of being surprised surprisingly playable with cloud gaming and it looks good this is better settings than i normally use on a pc because i usually just turn everything to low with epic draw distance input latency it's not not there uh i've noticed that um especially in fortnite if i take off if i put on i, sh I should say if i put on ray tracing the delay is more if i take off ray tracing the delay is less. It's because their machines are doing more to render ray tracing and it takes more time mm. than it does if, if ray tracing was off. Yeah. Uh, but I think if you're just doing some casual Fortnite gameplay, it's fine. The Xbox Cloud Gaming was way easier to get running than GeForce Now. I just logged in, clicked on a game, and it worked. Whoa, that feels way snappier than GeForce Now. Xbox has clearly prioritized input latency over visual fidelity, which makes sense to me. I think that's a worthwhile trade-off. Okay, so let's talk about this. He gets a better performance. Why? He's in with Xbox because he's in Canada, okay? <laughs> Microsoft has servers in Canada. NVIDIA has one. Yeah. So he gets a snappier feel on top of the fact that uh, the graphics and the bit rates... Uh, Microsoft gets you very limited. So with that little a bit of data, things are going to feel uh, much snappier. So this is why I tell everyone who asked, how's the latency? Everyone's latency with cloud gaming is going to be a different experience. All based on your location. Based on your location, based on your device, based mm -hmm. on your internet settings, the whole kit and caboodle. Game library wise, it's all of the Xbox Game Pass stuff, uh, which is pretty extensive and it's included in the subscription. So on top of the games that Xbox Game Pass is, uh, is offering, yes, you can only get that now, but Microsoft has confirmed that we will be getting play your own games on Xbox Cloud. Don't know how that's going to be. Don't know when, but they said this year somehow, uh, sometime, so just keep that in mind. I then tried and failed to get PlayStation's cloud gaming running. The best I could get running was some abominable form of PS Link, which didn't recognize the controllers in the Logitech cloud, forcing me to use a touch control interface uh, from hell. Gran Turismo 7 was completely unplayable because of the lack of variability in any of the controls, and it required me to have a PS5 running. So I swiftly moved... Okay, okay. This is remote play, isn't it? Yeah, that's not PlayStation Plus. This is com this is completely misleading. Yeah, because you can get remote play on just on on your phone, uh -huh. any any device that supports it, and mm -hmm. you can run your games through remote play as long as you have an, uh, a PlayStation. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, you don't even need the, the PlayStation Plus service for that. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I've never seen that touchscreen controller setup ever on yeah. PS Plus. Right. I've never seen. He that. said he tried and failed to get the thing set up. Of course, because uh, so this PS... is what he got to work, but it's not. But it's, it's not even the service. It's not even the service. PS Plus, the actual cloud gaming uh, app, is only available on the PC Windows PC right now. That's mm -hmm. it. 
Mm. It's not on a- a- Android. They're not focused on that because they want you to buy their own stuff. Yes, Portal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is all very work. misleading. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised he didn't do any more research on that. But, you know, what else? What else is new? It sounds like he, he gave everything about 45 minutes and then moved on. And yeah, they the call next. it a day. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Over to a virtual computer cloud gaming service, Shadow PC, which went very well. Wait, you have to use the touchscreen like a trackpad? It doesn't... What? That carries over to the keyboard as well. You have to, like, move the mouse... What? I quickly realized that this was not the correct device to use the streaming service on, so I tried a Chromebook instead. I'm so excited to see one. how this super cheap Chromebook... So, the any Android or any... Uh, Chromebook, and which is based off the Android, it's the worst way to play Shadow. It's, it's what it is. It's it's slow. Yeah. It's laggy. It's it's yeah. not a powerful app. Uh, to well, run he's Shadow. caught in the same thing that a lot of people are getting caught in. They try cloud on whatever's in front of them. Whatever is in front of them. Companies and if these companies don't maintain all access points to their service, then when they try it, it's not good. Yes, and and, and like I said. Everyone's experience with cloud gaming is going to be different. It's got some real issues tracking mouse movement. It feels so desynky in a way I've never experienced before. This is weird. I then. What's interesting is that he, he tried Shadow, but he didn't try maximum settings. I think he. I don't think he knew how to get it set up, because maximum settings would have performed much better for him in Canada, since they're based in Canada. The problem is, is uh, he's going to have to, like, do Linux, do Moonlight, I know. do all that yeah, stuff. I That's, I, I, I enjoyed maximum settings, but the setup is real. And I think that's his point at the same time, though, is that these things are confusing. Yeah. So it's like. It's he's right. Confusing. No, he's right. Yeah. He's yeah. right about it. It's yep. too confusing to set up. Then what's the point? There needs to be an app. And when you install the app, which might ask you two questions. It should just work after that. Yeah, that's, what, work. that's what the current user wants. Yep. 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 This app is completely different on the desktop. Yep. Okay, well, the weird sure. mouse desync latency is gone, so that's good. But once I launched Dota, the word good quickly melted from my vocabulary. And what makes these dips down to 20 frames per second even more shocking is that this is by far the most expensive service I've tested so far. This costs $44 a month. I feel like for $44, you can buy an actual PC that will run Dota better than this. Now, in all fairness to Shadow PC, I think it's mainly an enterprise product with some gaming marketing stapled on as an afterthought. At least I hope that's the case. Nope, Shadow started with gamers first. And then they expanded. It was the, it's the exact opposite. On a final note, I did also try one of these little like controller add-ons for your phone with cloud gaming, which worked really well, even if it was a bit flimsy. Backbone works really well for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, either for I, just I mobile also, mobile apps altogether, yeah. or uh, GeForce Now on the cloud. Also, I wouldn't call it flimsy. It's not flimsy. Yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know why yeah. he's he's yeah, not as flimsy. So um, yeah. Works pretty well for us. Yeah, he has a certain vibe he's going for for this whole video. I know. Well, he's he's, he's trying to prove a point. So yeah, he's like, trying to prove you know, a point. He's going to yeah, he's going to like sensationalize a couple of things. That's about it. So, uh, any last thoughts? But no, as far as far, final thoughts, I think what he focused on this one for the mostly was like handhelds, and I see what he's saying for the most part because there's a lot of them out there, and I think right now for a lot of people who you know may even not want to who don't have a pc you may want to go for a handheld because you get everything with each cloud gaming platform into a smaller device it's just a matter of art which is the best one to get and which one is actually going to do what it's made to do and he he's made some good points. Like he didn't get into he didn't talk about like the steam deck or the rog ally and i think you know he does like i said he does make some good points about those but at the same time i mean when you look at the services themselves yes again they do have their issues but overall they they i mean they do perform well it just is again it's all it's not everybody's going to be the same yeah it's all dependent about where you are what you're look what games you're even looking to play yeah and then you know how often even what services you're getting on it's all you got you have to find what works for you yep yeah you yeah. get it but that's 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 kind of the point that though point perfectly though he's yeah. he's a guy i mean he's not a cloud expert but you shouldn't have to be an expert that's the, yeah you that's kind of the know. point yeah 
Yeah. See, he, I, he I, walked I, in. He didn't find what he was looking for. He, he knows that he wants to play video game on cloud service. That is that is the basic caveman thought, and this is what he came up with. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and mm -hmm. like I said, we're we're not at that point yet. Um, all these services need to have servers and, and data centers around the world, almost everywhere, so mm -hmm. people can actually get access to whatever service they want, whenever they want. Hey, if you don't know anything about cloud gaming and you watch this video, you're really going to be turned off of it because you don't know these things. Yeah. Well, that's probably the reason you wanted to make this in the first place. Yep. Mm -hmm. is that this feels off to us, but mm -hmm. I guess the, the main important thing is I would have hoped he would have came up with the very obvious thing of distance and hardware equals latency and performance and it just kind of got bundled into cloud service not good and he's and he's not completely wrong about everything i think there's some exaggerations and we did no point some things out that were just wrong like with the ps plus thing and the remote play mm -hmm. but i mean overall i mean like we're doing now we kind of answer those questions yep as far as like you know what those issues were well guys that's it the link to the original video is in the description. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next React video.